Hello all and welcome back to another episode of the Game Time CT Pickums podcast. It's your boy Pete Paguaga and as always I'm joined by Sean Patrick Bowley and take a look at this. Boom! New layout. Look at us. Look at us. Now you get to see both of us oh. at the same time. You get to see my reaction when Pete does one of his you know, St. Joe over New Canaan things, or New Canaan over St. Joe picks. I'm going, oh, man. <laughs> well, I know that there have been some, I'm not going to call them complaints. Backs against the wall. Been, I know there have been some uh, love letters sent to us that they love when the show opens up and it's just my big face on their screen. <laughs> um, I know that they're very happy about that. So, Somebody uh, said that to me on the Meat Grinder podcast, which you should all watch. Please. It's very good, too. I feel it. Oh, I think it beat you out just by a little bit. The, the pick. But someone said, like, I, I, I did the ones where we, we, sh we show how bad the picks were on this show. And then I, so just to emphasize how bad the picks were, I zoomed in real tight on your face and put an echo on your voice. And they're like, I did not want that on my TV. <laughs> <laughs> well, please, if you're watching it on your TV, you should totally send us photos and be like, look at you guys on my 75-inch yeah. television, if you yeah. have one. Yeah. All right, well, we're back for another week of the picks and another week in the books. I'm not I, – I went 9-1 and one again. After two terrible weeks, I'm back at the top of the board. I went 9-1. and one. You went 8-2. and two. I Not mean, bad. We're here, man. Not bad. I mean, I, I, picked, I had one pick that I – I should have been 9 Yeah, one. I don't know why you made that pick. Well, just dare to be different, as Ned Griffin says. Dare to be different, but – yeah, it cost me in this one. All right. And none of that. Yeah, well, I'll none be honest. I, like you I, did. Want, I wanted to pick Bunnell, and it's easy to play Monday morning quarterback and say that, oh, you wanted to pick Bunnell because Bunnell won. But, like, deep down, I really did want to pick Bunnell, but I didn't want to get burned again. But Bunnell won. Uh, Coach Ty Jenkins actually yeah. asked me when he will be receiving the eight ball. Um, so I, I mailed it to Bunnell. They should have gotten it today. We're recording on Monday. Uh, so they should have gotten it. Uh, they were very happy. The eight ball yeah. got a lot of love. They saw an eight ball and eight ball. We trust on those social media pages on TikTok, And, you know, I saw a lot of eight ball. We trust little eight ball emojis. Yeah. So that was great. Um, but, you know, just quickly, the overall standings, Dan Brecklin, the boss man leads the way at 31 and nine. Dave Stewart. About time had a bad week. He went six and four. He drops to 30 and 10. Joe Morelli. 30 and 10. I love when Joe's in the mix. Um, I'm at 29 and 11. Sean, you and five other, four other staffers are at Ugh. 28 and 12. I got to Not out of it. Here. Yeah, I got to separate. Bornabio, 26 and 14. Sam McNamee, Brian Carpenter, 25 and 15. Carl Adamek, 24 and 16. And the eight ball at 19 and 21. We've had it be over 500 this late in the year, but it's still pretty close. I mean, the eight ball went five and five last week. I think it's got five and five the last I, two weeks. The eight ball does not care where it ends up. It all cares is that it is carried off the field by a number of teams that it picks that do win. So, Bunnell carried it off the field. Who was the other one? Uh, Norwalk. Norwalk carried it off I think Norwalk was a little surprised. I, I got a, a message from someone from Norwalk who was said that Coach Forge was a little surprised to get a toy eight ball in the mail. <laughs> so. He doesn't watch? <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> Look, he's got a lot. Of, he's got a lot of work to do over there. I know he was not happy with the last two uh, last two games, but uh, here's a couple of things. Uh, uh, how the heck is Brecklin up on everybody? What what is going on here? He reads everything, man. He's the editor. He's got to read everything. Oh, is that what it is? He actually yeah. does read this stuff. Oh, he man. reads all the previews, man. Oh, he geez. he was very involved early. He I, sends me notes on, on some. He's like, I'm picking this team because of X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. And mm. Morelli, you know, is just sitting there with the laboratory. With the beakers, he's got the books out, you know, looking at the <laughs> Morelli. I love Morelli. He's like, he's like getting all the <laughs> he's he's like measuring it out. He's like, and he's got the the monkey in the cage and the elephant. He's the elephant walks over there, he picks them. He is one of a kind. No, oh, we love him. Okay. Oh, all Let's right, you ready to dive in? We it's a weird week, something. man. Oh. We got no CCC, no FCAC, limited, only two ECC games, one SWC game. So some of these games, we're gonna, you're kind of going to be like, why are you picking this game? I like to get a lot of representation from across the state when I can. So we're, we got the one SWC game. I don't know, Pete. I might, just one, I might just forfeit. 
forfeit. Sorry, that's a deep cut. No, we, right. don't, we don't do that. Yeah. yeah, so you ready to start? I'm ready. Let's go. All right, we are going, starting the CTC. We got Quinnebog Valley 0-3 on the road to play the VGW Titans, who are 1-2 VGW, the renamed Titans, won their first game of the season last week. They beat O'Brien Tech, uh, and they're... They're winners. Sean, I'm going to let you go first on this one. Are you riding with VGW for a, two wins in a row, or does Quinnebog get in the win column? Quinnebog Valley. Pete, they've lost to Plainfield, Stonington, and Northwest United. Those are all pretty good opponents, if we're being honest, as far as Quinnebog Valley is concerned. VGW Titans, the the Titans, right? It looks like it has the... Uh, there's a yep. Tennessee Titans logo variation, uh, which is a nice job by uh, their new coach. Uh, they have played Prince Tech, Cheney, excuse, yeah, Cheney Tech, and O'Brien Tech. That one win is against O'Brien Tech. And that's a I'm not going to ride with uh, the VGW. I think uh, Quinnebox is a little battle-tested. I'm going to go with Pride. Wow. All right. I'm going to go with VGW Titans on Good this voice. one. Um Two wins in a row, I'm all in. And my roommate from college oh. played for them years ago. So that's really the reason why. Going to the ECC, we got Ledyard 4-0 on the road to play Waterford, who is 4-0. Both these teams in double S, both undefeated. Ledyard a little less battle-tested than Waterford this season. Waterford opened the year with a win over 4 into the SEC by 1-1. They beat Bacon Academy by 20, Montville, and Plainfield on the other side. Ledyard opened up against Thames River, Plainfield, Bacon, and Montville. Yikes. So, a little bit of crossovers there. I think I think three of their games were the same. Bacon, yeah. Montville, and Plainfield. And Ledyard scored a lot more points in those games. I mean, you know, they beat Bacon 44 nothing. Waterford only beat them. 20 nothing. Waterford also down one of the better players in the state in Brady Shutman yes. for the season that we mention all the time. I'm going to go first on this one, and I'm going to go with Ledger. I like if you're going to compare opponents to the three games that they've played that are the same, Ledger has dominated those games, put up a lot of points. I like A.J. Adamek a lot. He's one of my like favorite players uh, from smaller schools in the state. So I'm going with Ledger in this one. Sean, who do you like? Yeah, I'm going to go with Ledger too. Um Look, I, yeah, they're not, uh, like you said, not as battle-tested, but they're running that. It seems like they're doing a nice job with the single wing there. As I, as they're still playing. I haven't seen them yet this year. Um, and Adam Mc always seems to find his way into our top performers list. Um, you know, Sutton's a huge loss for uh, for Waterford. They're hanging in there. So this is, a, this is a fun game. This should be good for everyone out in ECC land. Uh, be there, be square. But uh, I'm going to go with the Colonels. Pete. Okay. Going to the NVL. Waterbury Career Academy, 3-1 mm. and one, on the road because they're just staying in Waterbury to play the 3-1 and one Holy Cross Crusaders. Holy Cross coming off a big win. Drew Collette broke multiple state records uh, in the win. WCA, we, we liked them at the beginning of the year. They said they got a lot of dudes. Um, they do. 3-1. and one. I mean, with their only losses to Ansonia, I, I, I believe. So, Sean... Who do you like in this one? Waterbury Career, Holy Cross. Pete, this is a really tough spot for Waterbury Career Academy. Like they were a you know playoff team last last year, and uh, you gave Ansonia banged up Ansonia a little bit of a run in the quarterfinals. Uh, but the, the last week's lost Ansonia, they weren't even they were not in the game at all. Um, so uh, I, I don't think that they're kind of quite ready to be boss as far as like the NVL top division. Uh, what is that? The Copper? I don't even know. Copper division, uh, yeah, it's, it's yeah. division one, division two. All right, division one, NVL is concerned. Drew Cowett and that whole crew, uh, just an amazing job so far. They have the one loss in Noggy, um, but uh, you know, a very close one. I think they're ready for prime time. Waterbury career, despite having a big man, David Rare, there, man, Oof, massive kid. Is uh, but I'm gonna go with uh, the Crusaders. Yes, I too will go with Holy Cross. I do think you know they in their divisions they could be named after whatever metals. I don't even know get copper and brass and whatever uh, they want. It, it is a ranked 
uh, each division is a ranked top division, bottom division, and I don't think you know Waterbury career is at that level yet. So I'm gonna go with Holy Cross in this one. All right, off to the Pequot we go, and this one's always fun. I always put this on the bra- I always put this on the bracket. I always put this on the board every year that they play. Uh, it's a real fun relationship and friendship. Uh, you got Stafford, the the Bulldogs co-op on the road to Rockville to play uh, the Rams. <clears throat> Brian Mazzone, head coach at Stafford. Eric Knickerbocker, head coach at Rockville. Coached together coming up under Keith Talkis, who is now back. Uh, he was at Ellington for the last couple of years. Now he's back under, uh, back working with Knickerbocker at Rockville. Um, but Stafford is back in the mix now. I uh, It's fun when Stafford's good. They had some really great years when Brian Mazzone started. Um, they were a fumbled snap away from going to the state championship in 2018. Uh, I know Brian is not going to want to hear that. Uh, and Rockville has gone to two state finals, uh, since 2021. Great program. I saw Rockville this past week, Amir Knight and transferred. Everyone knows that, but they have guys who have kind of stepped up, spread the ball out a lot. I really like Brady Ramsdale, a quarterback. He might not be the flashiest or the biggest numbers, but he's smart. He learns. He he puts them in the right spots. And your guy, Jonathan Kasamba, mm. you know, uh, he's your guy. Uh, but I'm going to no. go first on this one, and I'll let you go. But I'm going to take Rockville in this one. I think Stafford's still young. They're on their way up. But I think Rockville is still uh, at the top of the mountain in the Pequot. Sean, who do you got? Yeah, I saw Kasamba's breakout game there for Rockville, as far as I was concerned. You know, catch, getting that uh, touchdown, getting two sacks back-to-back, and then getting a touchdown on a fumble recovery in that makeup game with Granby Canton uh, last year. Great game. Yeah, he's he's a force for them. He's been pretty good so far. I'm going to go with Rock Rockville, too, in case you haven't uh, figured that out. I just think, like, they're just a little more, little more seasoned team. Big moment here for Stafford. You know, uh, they've been trying to climb their way back since, uh, since that great run. Uh, pre-COVID, but uh, I I think Rockville, despite not having Knight, and I think they've even Nate Palmer, who they lost for the season again, uh, which you know I really hate to see that, but they've been doing a real nice job. I like the uh, Rams. All right, we're going to the SCC. Shelton 0 and 4 on the road to Rafferty Stadium, a Friday afternoon game, 3:45 p.m. Be there, be Ooh. squared. Uh, Shelton on the road playing at 3 and 1 Fairfield Prep. We talked about Shelton a lot on the meat grinder. Uh, go listen to it if you haven't. And um, this just might not be, might be one of those years for Shelton. Um, and Fairfield Prep, we were a little concerned about Prep coming off the loss to hand. They struggled against Trumbull, really left your scratch in your head, but they really took it to Xavier. Robbie Manning threw for five touchdowns in the win. Our guy, Finn Bar Malloy, had a great game, and the Prep defense played really well. Um, Sean, who do you like in this one? Shelton doing their best Fairfield Prep 2023 impression. I don't think that's going to get it done uh, for them this year. Uh, <laughs> jokes aside, it is one of those years for Shelton. I mean, looking at the rest of their schedule, uh, it's pretty. It's going to be pretty tough going, even if they wanted to try and go 0 and six and make the state playoffs at four and six. Um, it just really kind of depends on how L shapes up. And there are a lot of good teams, and also it's probably not going to happen. I I think Shelton starting to start to uh, they're starting to get better. They played well versus hand, even though that kind of, kind of got away from them on the scoreboard. But they were they answered the, the call in that one. They just need to get the defense going now and need to get teams to stop kind of running all over them a bit. I think if they do that, they'll be in great shape. And, uh, you know, uh, Prep's been off to a really great start uh, since losing that game to hand. I mean, there's no shame in that because Shelton did too. Uh, that game, though, last week, um, you know, they against Xavier. You know, Xavier's also over. I think they play – they. They surprised me, prep. You know, I, I was kind of thinking they're not even lose to Xavier, uh, even though I didn't uh, quite actually believe that. But I would not have been surprised. Well, you know, Robert Manning and the guy showed up and said, eh, "No, nah, we don't think so." So I'm going to go with the Jesuits. I think they're uh, clearly back on the mend here. Yeah, I'm going to go with Fairfield Prep too, but I am keeping my eye on this game to see which prep team shows up. Because if the prep team that played Trumbull shows up, Shelton might win this game. But if the prep team that played Southington and Xavier shows up, prep is going to win this game. All right. To the NVL, another NVL matchup. We got 1-3 Seymour on the road to play 3-1 and one Derby. Same thing with Shelton. We'll say about Seymour. It just might not be that good of a season for Seymour. A lot of 
changing and a lot of you know younger kids they, they, they keep saying it's a rebuilding Aaron Seymour their one win I think was six or seven nothing over Oxford seven um yeah. and uh you know Oxford's kind of really not you know kind of rebuilding too after their great season last year uh and then you got Derby three and one uh they started the year three and oh lost to Torrington and their single wing offense um but Derby's been a really fun story uh the bar the Barboza quarterback has been great to watch, throwing the ball all over the field. Um, I, I'm like kind of torn where to go on this because on one hand, it's like, Derby, this is exciting. But on the other hand, Seymour is, you know, like this blue blood in the NVL where they should beat the Derby the last, you know, 10 or 15 years or something like that. But you know what? I'm going with Derby here. I, I, I'm liking what Coach Clark is, is, uh, is, is putting together uh in derby so i'm gonna ride with them sean who do you got this is a really tough one because you really want to look at seymour's schedule Pete. yeah they lost they beat oxford seven nothing but let's take a look watertown they played 55 six loss and sonia they played 47 zero loss and finally holy cross 42 seven they lost that right there is three of the best teams in the NBL. Back to back to back to back. Basically back to back. They surely had a breather with Oxford there. Only beat him 7 nothing. I don't know what happened in that one. Uh, then Oxford just got smoked by uh, by Kennedy uh, the uh, last week. So um, it's <laughs> just judging by uh, that alone. But you know what? I'm going to go with Seymour here. I feel like they're due. I feel like Derby kind of got a taste of like, oh, man, you know, maybe we're not as good as we say we are. We think we are. We got to start playing a little better. I think it's going to be a good game. I I feel like Seymour's do though. I think Seymour is going to win late. It's going to win on a kind of a barn burner game. It's going to be really tough. Uh, you know what? It's going to be all rock and sock and NVL game. Uh, but I'm going to go with the Cats. Don't let me down, Cats. You know, I know we've had our differences, but don't let me down. All right? I love you, Derby. I'm just going to go with them for now. But if they, if, don't let me down, Seymour. If you do, I, I've picked you so many times against Ansonia, and you've let me down. So, like, this is a spot. Here, you got to beat Derby. Don't let me down. All right. That's all I got to say. Next. All right. We got another one. We got Pomparag 0-4 on yeah. the road at Newtown. This is the only SWC game on the calendar, so I obviously wanted to include it. We've talked about both these teams kind of at length this year on all the shows. Um, Pomparag 0-4. We were up, gave it right back to Bethel. I think we're a little surprised to see Pomparag is 0-4. Uh, on the flip side, Newtown is – playing awesome and this is everything that we expected from newtown uh i'm just gonna make it real short on this one i'm gonna go with newtown sean yeah i'm gonna go with newtown too uh, i you know i think pop Rock's kind of a hard luck Owen four I, I mean that was a tough game against bethel they're pretty even i mean granted there are a few ones you're like oh man but i expected a lot out of pop Rock, and i hope i uh by maybe they turn things around but i don't think it's gonna happen here against Newtown. I'm going to go with the Niners. All right. We got three more left. This one, one of the few crossover games. We got Lyman Hall, one and three. Lyman Hall on the board for a second straight week. Sean, maybe get burned again. They are on the road playing Bobby Sanchez's Oof. New London Whalers. Um, Lyman Hall coming off a loss to Hill House. New London oh, off to a one and two start. Sean, who do you like in this one? I, oh, man. I can't believe I'm doing this. I'm going to go with Lyman Hall game, even though they disappointed me last week. Lyman Hall, Trojans. Look, I, the kid was good. I get it. You know, you guys got to play a little defense, though. I know he was good. You got to play a little defense. This is a team you can play defense on. I think you're going to be okay. You're right there with Amity. You're right there with Hill House. You're going back and forth. Uh, I'm going to go with the Trojans. If you guys disappoint me again, that's going to be it. No more, no, <laughs> no more soup for you. Anyway, I'm going to go with the Trojans. I have faith in the Trojans. All right, yeah, I'm gonna go with Lyman Hall too. I think, um, you know, it's a it's a trip up to New London, but I think they'll enjoy it. Uh, but I'm gonna go with the Trojans as well. All right, two more. We got North Haven three and one on the road to play Notre Dame West Haven at two and two. North Haven, I think we all, you know, they lost the first one. I mean, I think I picked St. Joe's in that game, but I think we expected North Haven to get better as the year goes on, right? A lot of new faces. You know, they're just getting comfortable to playing at this level and kind of, you know, just everything that comes with it at North Haven. And I think we all assume they would get better as the year gone has gone on, and they really have. And there's been a lot of different guys who have stepped up. 
um, filled a lot of voids left by some all state great players. Um, and then Notre Dame West Haven, they had a big win in the season opener. Now we're kind of just like sitting here. They're two and two. We're kind of like, they lost to law and you're kind of just sitting here. You're like, what, what Notre Dame team is going to show up this weekend? And I don't know. And because I don't know, I know what team North Haven is going to show up with, um, this week. Um, so I'm going to go with North Haven because I know what I'm going to get from the Nighthawks and they're going to run the ball. They're going to put points on the board. They're going to be methodical. They're going to play great defense so i'm gonna go with north haven it seems like the best the better pick yeah i have a hard time picking Notre Dame. you know i was impressed by their opening win all right uh they who'd they beat uh it was foreign i believe no they beat trumbull uh, trumbull that was what they beat trumbull you're like oh all right yeah, I think trouble's gonna be okay and then then they uh they got smoked by uh, law then they beat foreign okay and then they got crushed by which a pretty good Ludlow team um like you said, I don't know which one's going to show up. North Haven uh, will definitely run the single wing, and they'll run it well, and they'll run all over Notre Dame West Haven. I'm going to go with the Nighthawks. Yes, will the real Notre Dame West Haven please stand up? Okay, for the final game, another crossover game. This one's really interesting. Oof. And uh, if you if you like this show, then you already listened to the Coach's Corner to get all the information from Guilford coach Brian White. We got Killingly, 4-0, making the trip down the shoreline to Guilford to play the 2-1 and one Grizzlies. You got Hayden Allard running the ball for Killingly, and you got Caden Hillier running the ball for Guilford. This is going to be an old-school, run-it-down-your-throat, punch-for-punch type game. I mean, this game might be over in 90 minutes in terms of how much yep. these teams are going to run the ball. Ned Griffin will be thrilled. Yeah, maybe we'll just add Ned there because he <laughs> will just love that. He'll just count how many rushing attempts there are yeah. in this one. Sean, we've talked about these teams at length. We had Coach on the show. Who do you like in this one? Killing was down big. That was big, but they were down against Sheehan and came back and won amazingly. And Allard is great. Been great for them. It's like Soren who? <laughs> Who's that? That happened? Uh, they've kind of moved on very quickly over there in uh, the quiet corner. Now they come down here. You know, they got Sheehan at their place last time. Now they come down here against a Guilford team that has a tougher schedule than last year, which Brian White loves. Um, but it did not help them when they came to crunch time in, in the uh, late in the year when they played hand, had a lead on them, could not seal the deal. So now they have a tougher schedule, but now you don't have a lot of wiggle room as they found out against uh cheshire which kind of gave them the business bit there with that said i'm oh man i'm gonna go with killingly i think i don't know i just have a hard time uh doubting that kid uh, uh the allard twins or two of the other ones are uh, is pretty good too but uh so you know, they got the dudes up front i mean i know hillier is great i saw them scrimmage rockville and he was just breaking tackles left and right. If you don't wrap him up, you're in big trouble. Cheshire wrapped him up. I think Killingly will be a little bit better. They'll wrap him up a little bit. But uh, I think it's going to be a tough game. I'm still going to go with Killingly. Yeah, this game is a honestly is truly a coin flip for me. You know, Guilford's only loss is to Cheshire. And, and Cheshire is a really good program. And even in a bad year, Cheshire is you know, going to be still be a good program. Mm -hmm. Um you know, you saw Sheehan just take it to Killingly early. And, like, Killingly obviously came back in that game and Sheehan wasn't really able to seal the deal. Um, but, man, I, I, I'm drinking the Kool-Aid. I am all aboard the Grizzlies bus. Ooh. I'm going with Guilford in this one. Oh. I, am, I am putting my faith wow. in Coach Brian White and Caden Hillier. I think Caden Hillier is a legit dude. And... Um, I'm gonna go with Guilford. Run in this one. people's gonna Pete is gonna run people over with Jack Guilford pick. Wow! I wonder how many of you guys are gonna pick Guilford. You know, I mean, look, they gotta prove themselves, but they're also big bad SEC. The, every time I say, "Oh, there's some of the big bad SEC," they get smoked. <laughs> I did it with Brantford and Berlin game one. And I think I did that with I don't know somebody else, but that's uh, interesting. I mean, listen, they can do it. He's yeah. good. He's a good player. Really good. Player. All right, we'll see. I guess I, oh, we'll maybe see. I'll try and climb up above you, hopefully. Got to pull away from yeah. the back. 
Yeah, I'm this 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 screams five and five all over it, and I'm back Seymour. at the bottom. Seymour. Who was the other one I needed? <laughs> Seymour and uh, Lyman Hall, two teams right there. Guys, let's go. Your old pal SPB needs you to play football. Let's go. All right. Well, that's it. You know, so for Sean Patrick Bowley, I'm Pete Paguaga. We'll see you all out at the field. Peace.